The NWU Galleries Botanical Gardens is busy with new installations for their forthcoming group solo exhibition titled Not Another Hair Show. Curated by Tsehofa Soseoka, the, show, well, the showcase features various notable female visual and fine artists such as Pumzi Leptelezi, Mel Madiba, Lebohang Mutaung and Nompumele Longoma, just to name a few. And to tell us more about the burst of creativity that's due to open on the 9th of August to the 17th September 2021, we're now joined on Zoom by its curator, Tsehofa Sosioka. Tsehoi, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you, Zunpio, for having me and good morning to you and your viewers too. It's an absolute pleasure having you, Tsehoi, this morning. Let's start with what the concept behind Not Another Hair. Uh, what is this exhibition all about? Um, the exhibition is titled Not Another Hair Show. And the concept behind it was um, after publishing my dissertation, which was about black women's hair and black women's hair practices in South Africa and the diaspora. So the exhibition is inspired by the results of the dissertation where I critique the common um, goings around that when black women style their hairs with weaves and braids and wigs, that they're not um, in tune with their Africanness or practicing the African identity. So the exhibition aims to highlight different styling um, opportunities offered by black hair and to celebrate them all as different embodiments of African identity. And your role as the curator for this exhibition, I mean, what vision did you have for this project? Um, the vision that I had for the project mainly was to showcase African hairstyling in all its glory, also highlighting how different artists capture and work with this theme of black hair and hairstyling. So the, the, the exhibition includes sculptures, paintings, drawings, digital illustrations, all dealing with black hair and black hairstyling practices, showing the diverseness of black hair and black hairstyling. Now speak to us about the participating artists for this exhibition and the kind of work that they've produced. Um, the kind of artist that we have is Kelsana Rishamufu, who's producing, um, who produces sculpture, Sunshine. This particular work is by Kinele Mokwena, who is also a multimedia artist. This is Steven Langa, who's a drawing artist and has a couple of works on the exhibition with the drawing. This is Mel Madiba, who's a pyrography artist. Uh, Mel Madiba burns the wood with, with a pyrography tool to create these beautiful artists. And yeah, that's most of the artists. There's also Roland Gast, who deals with hybridity and, and, and the combination of two identities coming in together when it comes to black aesthetics and hair as well. Okay. And uh, when art patrons view the body of work that's part of the Not Another Hair show, what are they going to experience? I think um, the one thing that I would like them to come out with, or the, the one thing that I, I would like to highlight, is the beauty of African hair and the beauty of African aesthetics that can be expressed in different hairstyles. I mean, if you look at hairstyle, there's braiding, there's <clears throat> weaving, you know, there's texture, there's pattern, there's color. All of that beauty is embedded and showcased in all of these works that I have selected. And that is what I would like the viewer to come out with. And this group exhibition kicks off on Women's Day. Just take us through how this day is celebrated through such art exhibitions. Um, this exhibition is um, opening on the 9th of August, which is Women's Day. I think for me, or for us, with, with Amahela Mohajani, deciding to open it on this day was to celebrate women's freedom of choice. Because, I mean, for, for, for black women, freedom of choice is something that has been quite problematic, especially with things that come to hair. I mean, with the recent um, protests that we've been seeing at school, students protesting about their hairstyle, I mean, black hair goes through so many challenges, but we want to, we just want to show and, and celebrate the freedom of expression that one can embody with their hair without any prejudice. You know, Tsecho, in your, you know, you know, dissertation, when you critique the notion that, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're wearing artificial hair does not make one truly African. I know that it'll be met with a barrage of criticism, especially from staunch cultural, you know, Africans and uh, cultural uh, African experts. So 
How would you approach this particular matter? I mean, how do you draw that link uh, between artificial hair and being truly African? Um, if you, um, 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 once you go through my dissertation, which can be downloaded on my website, you will see that I have done prior research to pre-colonial African aesthetics, where you will see that pre-colonial African hair practices include um, 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 how the, the the, the woman from the past used to take plant fiber, used to take animal fiber, used to create these elaborate hairstyles using whatever it is that they have at them and then create weaves, create long sinew beads, create long elaborate hairstyles from that. So what I'm, what I'm arguing is that as much as people think that putting on weaves and wigs and braids is not African, it is actually part of African traditional hair practice practices from the past. I mean, if you look at the Himba, the Himba society, which is still practicing and they're still sharing the same aesthetics right now, they get these long dreadlocks that they have and they put in goat's hair. That is just an organic form of, of the synthetic weave that we have now. So the only change has been that technology has te technology has affected the hair care range that now we have these things in synthetic forms, in new forms. But if you look back when they didn't have the technology, they would use plant fiber, they would use orchids, they would use animal hair and, and create those elaborate hairstyles. So that is actually practices of traditional African hairstyling that people don't think or sometimes are not aware of because, I mean, so much of our history has been um, 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 erased due to colo colonialism. But if you go back and look at the imagery of pre-colonial African traditional hair practices, you will find that black women were putting on weaves and black women were putting on braids and embracing different hairstyles and embracing long hair. And I'm also arguing that there's no one way of embodying Africanness or blackness because that's not what African culture is. African culture is made up of multitudes of patterns and, 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 and textures and colors. There's no just one way of embodying Africanness and not one way of celebrating Africanness through hair. There's many of them. And that is what I'm also trying to highlight with the exhibition and the dissertation. Interesting point you made there, Tsehofa. So just give us more details on how we can go about viewing and experiencing this body of work. Um, the exhibition is going to be a hybrid exhibition, which means that you can go physically to NW Gallery mm -hmm. or you can view it online. There is going to be a link to the online component of the exhibition. The exhibition can also be viewed online on my, on my website, mrsimone.co.za. All right, Zeho, great chatting to you. Beautiful discussion we're having this morning. It is indeed a pleasure having you on the show this, uh, this morning. And all the best in the exhibition. Thank you, Simpiwe. Thank you for having me. Enjoy the rest of your day. Great stuff. You too. Thank you, Zeho. Well, that was curator of the Not Another Hair Show group exhibition, Tsekho Fasosioka, and we've been speaking to her about this showcase that is due to open on the 9th of August and will be on display until the 17th of September.